here we're looking at how we can use the CSD transactions to manage the metadata for site reconciliation workflow within the Datum project. Uh, we begin with phase zero, where the global instance of DHIS2 serves as the master or authority for the site lists. Um, what, what it will do is it will periodically publish a site list um, to the interlinked registry. We'll call this the global master document. Um, when we want to look at the node instances, we have that they are basically slaves of the, the global interlinked registry. They use the ITI 74 transaction to update their cache of the global master document. Um, at this point, when the node's ILR cache has been updated, a user in the DHIS2 node instance can request the subset of the site list's hierarchy that they're interested in, and they can use the ITI 73 transaction. Um, in a little bit later, we're going to revisit this slide, but instead of um, looking at global master document, we'll be looking at something slightly different that's going to allow us to maintain um, the node configuration throughout the phase process. Phase one would be the next step, and this is when some of the operating units um, or implementing partners um, are managing their own site lists. Um, in this case, we still have a mixed bag. Some of the nodes are going to be slaves um, to the, um, the global um, interlinked registry. Uh, that's on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we see the, the nodes in which the, um, uh, they are managing their own site lists. In this case, what we're going to do is for each of the managed nodes on the right-hand side, the global interlinked registry can up execute an ITI 74 to update its cache of those managed nodes. Um, so there will be a, a document, uh, a CSD document for each of the operating units or implementing partners nodes um, stored in the interlinked registry um, at the global level. In addition um, to the global master document that we had um, from phase zero and the cache of these managed node documents uh, that we just discussed in the global ILR, we will have a global merge document. Um, what that is going to do is to pull in the um, operating units um, that are managed, their site lists, um, as well as for the ones that are not managed, it will um, fall back on the global master document. And we can see what that might look like uh, a little bit more um, clearly here. Let's say we have two operating units that are managing their own uh, um, site lists. That data is going to be pulled into the global merge document, um, and then the global master is going to be used for the operating units um, that are not n the number one or number two. So basically all of the sites that are not covered under the, the domain, the top level uh, organizational hierarchy for those nodes. Um, in phase two, sort of our end goal, that's when there are no more um, operating units that are not being managed. Uh, simply all we do there is to drop out the, the slave nodes um, but we still have the same picture. We have the global master document, which was our initial reference document uh, of sites that we will want to maintain eternally. We have the cache of the managed node documents for each of the operating units, and then we have the merge. Um, and essentially, the merge document is going to pull in all of the managed nodes um, operating units and overwriting anything that was in the global master document. Um, so revisiting phase zero, um, what we can do to keep the configuration consistent across all phases for the nodes is that um, we take the global master document and we simply copy it into the, the global merge document. Essentially, it's the same merge process that we were looking at phase one, except for the number of operating units that are managing their own nodes um, is uh, the empty set. Um, so as long as we have the node ILR pointing to the global merge document rather than the global master document, we can preserve the same um, configuration options at the node level through all phases.